Well, thank you for joining us for another edition of the very interesting Health and Safety Podcast. We are doing a takeover, and it's going to be a very interesting one because it is for International Women's Day, but we have a bit of a problem with that, don't we? Uh, yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> we, no, we like, do. Yeah, we do. We do. We do. So um, we'll do a, a brief introduction um, to both of us so you know who you are joining. So my name is Crystal Danbury. I've worked for uh, worked in the health and safety arena for about 20 years um, in various positions and now working for um, a retailer as their group head of safety and insurance. And I'm joined by the amazing... <laughs> the incomparable. Uh, Elisa Lynch. <laughs> Uh, I've been working in safety for about seven, seven-ish years, um, all in construction. So construction is my background. That's anything I waffle on about. It is through that lens. So amazing. Yeah. And and in full disclosure, there will be swearing. And I have just cracked up with a beer. Which is- <laughs> amazing so I definitely uh, the minute I saw you crack a beer I was like great it's going to be that sort of podcast <laughs> so I should get myself a cider um interestingly construction is like one of the one of the heavy duty industries that I've never touched so I've done nuclear rail logistics transport telecoms now retail but t- I mean construction just feels like one of those industries that you I just I, f- I find it looks terrifying from the outside <laughs> if <Messy>. I'm honest <laughs> So yeah, do not envy nearly a decade in that, mate. Mm. Not at all. But then, then when I go in, like I dabbled in pharma for like six months, and I was like, get me the fuck absolutely out of here. Like there was no <laughs> mess, there was nothing. I was like, you've got this all pretty much sort up, guys. I'm just gonna head off. Everything <laughs> is shiny, and I don't it's want so to clean. <laughs> yeah, I was like, no, don't play out out this is probably part of the problem, right? Is both of us have worked in really heavy industry. Nothing is clean. Everything is engineering focused, you know, it is filthy, dirty. I mean, retail is probably my biggest exception where, but we still have like a major logistics arm, which is Mm. huge vehicles, HGVs, warehousing. I don't wonder whether, and this brings us to our issue, why this gives us the ick. So to give the listeners context, we were offered by the usual host of this, which is Colin Nottage, said, "Um, you know, ladies, it's really fantastic. It's International Women's Day. Come and do a podcast takeover. And both me and Elisa love Project Miletium, right, which is where we know Colin through, co-founder. And we also really respect all the podcast effort that they're both all going through. But both of us kind of cringed. Yeah. The conundrum is, right, and tell me if it's the same for you. I know we need representation. Like I, I absolutely yep. know it. Mm-hmm. I wish, I wish I could see women in really senior positions in safety when I was like 19 when I started. But why does it feel hard to tie yourself with women in construction, women in safety? What's what's the ick about? What's the ick about? I, I don't know. It is hard to articulate it, but I really feel like it's, Oh, because it's International Women's Day. Let's talk about this. And I'm like, okay, what the fuck about the rest of the year? (laughs) Like, it just just is really, yes, it's representation, but it's tokenistic. Like, it's, like, really tokenistic. Rarely feels genuine. Mm -hmm. And I could probably go into that a bit more. It rarely feels genuine. Um, I don't, and I don't see myself in it. Go, t- go and tip into it then what when if you were going to go more into it there's a um, construction industry federation in ireland um yep. i'm gonna name it drop it i don't care but they so every year they do like this webinar for international women's day and they got all these women on there and it's great and and it, it is about spotlighting women in construction and it does that to an extent but it's all like there's so many roles for you in this industry and they're literally mostly admin people I'm like, which is, I'm like, that's just the same. I'm already out. I, like, it's the same. And, or else, or, Grand, you might have some QSs, some architects, some safety, but there's never people on the trades. Rarely. Sorry, there was one um, supervisor once. She was a trade supervisor. But also, it's like they all 
come across really restricted, like they're really holding back on, on giving their genuine experience. Like it's, this is a great career opportunity, 100% agree. This is a great industry to work in, 100% agree. And that's where they stop. Yeah. It's like, if you want, if you really want to encourage young girls to look at this as viable, young women to look at this as viable, be honest and be like, there is some real fucking shit here. You are going to be up against it, but oh my God, I'll be there with you. And it's really rewarding. Not just sugarcoat the whole, this great career path, haha, lol, let's get them in the door and then let them figure it out after. <laughs> I, th- I think that is probably the ick for That's me. The you- ick you've just said something it really really resonates with me because it is I think you told me about that site and there's a page and it's like the only pink page on the website and oh, yeah. oh, it just yeah because you... actually yeah they they do they run a leadership course and it's called the Athena women in leadership course and I'm like I'm sorry the who where is there is there a Hercules men in leadership course <laughs> like stop this madness and no. I think this is if we were really going to go for equality really you would just be saying these courses that we already run, nothing with a pink label, nothing with a women in mm. label, but these amazing courses, we're gutted that it's 98% men on them. Like, you know, it's a wicked course to anyone that wants to come. I don't really want something designed, especially for the fact that I have boobs. I don't, I don't, I don't feel my gender is ever relevant to my competence ever. Like they're mm. not connected. And I think the bit that really resonates with me in this is it's tough. And I think the ick yeah. comes from, it's like, it's amazing. And we need more women here. And are we really tackling the underlying issues that stop women being just naturally being in that space anyway? And I'm not even going to go on to the political thing about like gender pay gap. Forget all the gender pay gap and all that sort of stuff, because that's just a whole Wait, We haven't got time. There's we no haven't time. got time. <laughs> but that whole thing about it's it's rough and actually it's going to be rough but we will absolutely be here for you when it gets hard and I think what I have definitely experienced having worked all the way up to now all the way up to nearly 40 always in kind of exclusively male environments mm. awful things like it, awful 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 experiences and if you try and share them, typically over the years, particularly at the beginning, everyone's like, well, you're choosing to work around men. That's your bad. <laughs> no, no, I'm choosing this job because this job is so cool. And I don't understand why if I choose this job, I have to choose to be treated in a particular mm. way. I'm not. I'm just trying to, I don't know, do something I'm interested in. Yeah. So I think it's the it's the the fact that maybe it's approached with a bit of rose tint rose tint and not full disclosure and that's what tint. it is yeah like if and it's like hey if you're going to come and work on this construction site there might not be sanitary bins for period products because nobody's fucking thought about it yeah you know it's yeah. these kind of things that you're and it's until you're standing you're like oh all right that's so that's a thing here but also with the whole international women's day webinars or events or whatever it's always women encouraging women in, which is grand. Yep. But I can't help but be like, well, where are the lads? Where are the men going? Come on and I'll yep. be here with you. Because all the women can stand together. That's grand. Um, except for all the ones with the whole internalized misogyny. And oh, Lord, could I go down that route? But <laughs> Have a good time. time. I get on better with the lads, don't we all? Okay, take me. But <laughs> hashtag I'm the fun one. Where are the men? Where so, are they? Mm. Like, where are they promoting this? Already conscious that I'm already making this really construction specific. Yeah. But at the moment, it's think, oh, we have labor shortage. We have labor shortage. There are skill shortage. I'm like, okay, yeah, but you didn't bother with half the population mm-hmm. for any of these lab- labor skills, trades, all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, we still have people going into schools, avoiding girls' schools when they go to talk about apprenticeships. Oh God! They don't go. They're just like, oh yeah, we need to go down to the lad school there. We need, to... and it's like, what? But on Women's International Day. Oh, they'll be yeah. That's when they'll be, they'll be banging down, bang down doors. Girls in STEM. Yeah, great. Okay, but girls in STEM all year round, please. 
and I, I think that whole where where are where are the men is is so it's so interesting. I did a panel at my last place, and um, it was probably the most insightful thing ever. And it was all around International Women's Day, and it was a women's panel. And they asked my boss, and it was so interesting. My boss, um, and I was like, oh, you've asked a dude to be on. And this is this is my problem, right? I was like, oh, you it's like a, mm-hmm. about women and it's women's back. You've asked the, my boss and he's a dude, and okay, fine, we'll we'll roll with it. The best insight into fantastic recruitment and why it's important for women to be on his team mm. came from him in that room. And I was like, and now I get it. Now I get it. Now I know where you're sat there. And he he made some flippant comments that made everybody laugh to sort of break the tension. But one of them was. If you want me, re- and this this is this is quoting a person, right? This is this is not me. It's quoting a person. He was like, mm. "Listen, if you really want complex, awesome work to be done on point, you you get women around your table because they get it done, right? Mm. They are not worried about a boys' club. They are not worried about networking. They are just getting it done. And and then I sort of I remember sitting there thinking, yeah, half your table is female. Half your senior leadership director table." is female and I just thought right okay you've got it and his successor the person he was training up to be um like the basically like the COO was again a really smashy woman incredible woman no big things about I only recruit and you know DNI he wasn't talking in this sort of jargony language and the, mm. the token gesture language he was just like genuinely like I've got a great team and all the really great stuff is typically done by the slot which was us which was the women I just thought yeah, what an eye opener. And it was all year round. It wasn't because there was a special day or a drive or a number to hit. It was because he mm. truly just believed if you're really good, sit around the table and it doesn't really matter who you are. Well, I've had similar reactions where it's like, oh, this is a panel about uh, women's issues and there's a dude. I'm like, what? But actually it's like, okay, bring everyone in. Yeah. If, if we're if we're saying all year round, we can't then be like, I don't want the <laughs> yeah. point to come in. <laughs> I said I can hear you all the time but uh no like so definitely yeah they they definitely have a place but the other thing is do they feel like they have a place do they because again we'd be so and lads I mean anybody knows me fucking raging feminist I will I'll drive it down your throat (laughs) but at the same time I can acknowledge that it's like oh are we are we encouraging men to be involved are we saying in the conversation right yeah get get involved in the conversation if you were to speak about this, oh my God, you would encourage me so much more or you would encourage somebody like me so much more. Because it's grand, again, like I said, it's grand to have the women in there going, hey, come on in. But it's like, are, yeah, okay. But mm. I also don't want to be treated any differently when you get there. I think that, that's what, number one, that's a really big issue for me is genuinely my last position didn't feel any different to any but there just really wasn't it was just get you know if you're good get in put your head down mm. and carry on but I've definitely worked at organizations that sort of oh, internally do the head tilt like oh look she's <laughs> a lady in that tilt. position mm. oh. um and I'm like no I, I don't want you to look at me think of me even consider anything other than my competence just let just let me go and I feel really disappointed when I feel like I'm being treated differently because or being treated with kid gloves or mm. um, people are sort of talking in a way that is unnatural to them. <laughs> so obvious. <laughs> so obvious. Um, so I just I just think if we're really going to be driving towards this 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 great place of equality, we just need to all be our actual selves. We forget who's in front of you. If you're you and you are your biggest fan and you are authentic, and you just respect the person in front of you for all of their qualities and all of their values, wouldn't the world be a great place? And then the only real conversation you need to have is if you're not doing something or if you are doing something, celebrate or build, right? But yeah, I think I've got a, I've got a, a, a wicked group of girl mates, um, and they all work in completely different fields, of actuary, major project manager in like infrastructure, um oh god journalists like works in nursery like all these different things like major marketing person running an agency and we get together and we basically just celebrate each other right Mm. and and that's that's twice a year that's not because it's a particular day that is just like ladies what is happening how are we doing if we're having any of these anti-female head tilt moments we sort of vent in the safe space 
and then we build each other up and, and because actually it can be back to your point it can be so tough mm. um so and I actually spoke to a couple of them about this podcast and about the fact that Ooh. we wanted to lean in because representation is important because I want if you are 18 17 15 16 20 and you are thinking what does the road look like ahead I want you to see me and Elisa sat right here smashing it and you absolutely are capable and you can do it yeah. this is the reason we're sat here what we don't want it to be done is in a contrived way and so I spoke to the girls and I said what do you think and I said is it just me that feels caught between don't want to contrive the message because women are awesome anyway and it shouldn't be one day a year do you want to represent because everyone that needs to see somebody yeah. needs to see someone yes yeah and not just see someone but not see someone dressed in pink being like so overfed, like just actual us, just yeah. women and, smashing it. And again, another caveat, if you want to be dressed in pink, like be super feminine, don't, whatever, well, grant. You don't think you have to look a certain way. Don't think you have to mm. be a certain way. You can just. I mean, I love to see a woman rock up in a con- construction site, full face makeup. Oh, oh, oh I, have so- <laughs> I love it. I'm like, yes, queen, rock it. Do you know what? If I see it on a construction site or at the school gate at eight o'clock in the morning, either way, I'm like, you've done that before, before the day has begun. Oh, I have respect for you. I just, I can't find the time to, to barely even do this. <laughs> so. <laughs> this isn't going out by video. I'm sure it's not. We're good. <laughs> well, let, let's you on me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so I spoke to my, I spoke to my friends and said, is it just me? Is it me hmm. struggling with this? And actually, a couple of them, three of the five said, I totally get it. I don't want to be seen as a woman in anything. I just want to be seen as good. Yeah. Um, but I also really wish I saw women in front of me so I knew it was possible. I wish I saw someone that looked like me winning at life, at career, so I could be like, see, totally possible. But equally, they wouldn't want to be sat in a woman in blah enter profession awards or whatever so I I struggle with it I I got nominated I got shortlisted today for woman of the year yeah that massively proud of because it's just woman of the year it's not a category of something it's just like crushed it and I think we need to be again that representation I want people in the room to be like yes we can win we can do awards we can do stuff but I just don't want it to be one day a year yeah, just when you mentioned there about your group of friends and, and being there and smashing it and all their smashy jobs. And a friend of mine, my cousin, actually, she is smashing it in um, aviation. Like, I mean, she's got she's fucking skyrocketed. And um, but like that hyper male industry. Yeah. Um, and I know this kind of thing really gets her gold as well, because. I suppose she would be like, I got here on hard working because I'm class right. at what I do. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But I know at the same time, she's like, oh, yeah, we need we need more. And then I suppose that takes us down to do we then go down the route of, oh, you know, targets and that kind of stuff when it comes to jobs. And actually, when we were on the Project Medium call earlier and uh, shout out to Peter Jenkins. There's no podcast now that he can't be mentioned on. That mm-hmm. is a rule. <laughs> but he was talking about like, equality but equity versus equality and I just I haven't heard somebody talk about that now explain what that is for a listener oh you're a bit more articulate now with this stuff than me I'll give it a bath and we can edit it out after if it's shit <laughs> <laughs> picture three people standing at a fence yep and one's really tall one's kind of medium and one's really short yep so the tall person can see right over the fence the middle person has to get up on their tippy toes but they can see over the fence and the short person cannot see over the fence so they're missing everything that's going on out there so quality is, I mean, they're all there. They're yep. all at the fence. It's kind of like, well, everyone had the same opportunities. Like, oh, but did they? And equity then would be, well, you give this guy a little hop up. So the little guy can stand up and now, and then you might give another little hop up to the guy in the middle who was on his tippy toes. And now everybody has the same eye line. Everyone can see over the fence. That to me is equity. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Okay. I saw a meme about that before. I was like, oh. I think that's what it is. That whole equal opportunity making sure everybody has the same access it's the access Um, yeah yeah for sure access to opportunity access to insight access to 
competence, all of it. I don't know whether it's, and I, there's going to be no conclusion as such to this podcast. It's just going to be sharing thought, yeah. I think, because I don't really know. I, so I, I, I get stuck in this, right? Hearing about your cousin who's smashing it in aviation, mm. everything in me is like, yes, absolutely brilliant. And I'm proud because she's female, because she's crushing that industry, because it's mobile, yeah. because that is a hard mission and she is succeeding. And the only way that she can be succeeding is total grit and awesomeness. 100%. I look at my girls sat around and each and every single one of them, grit, determination, ups and downs, challenge. I will name drop, drop Katie, right? She is incredible. Uh, and all the girls would agree. She's also got peroxide fire blonde like just blonde hair right Mm -hmm. she's fair she's I don't know about five foot three um she is I'm gonna say blessed right and she's she's gorge and good good for her right 100% god loves her um and the amount she told me about a time that she walked into a meeting that she was going to lead and I think it was on infrastructure transformation you already know where I'm going um and because it was infrastructure transformation and it was rail the room piled in with kind of basically like middle-aged to to older men and she walked in the room and somebody turned to her and started to give her the coffee orders Mm -mm. Mm -mm. no now because (laughs) everything in you is like Uh. someone turns her and started giving her coffee orders I can't remember which way it went either she absolutely started her response with I'm not here for coffee I'm here to run this meeting I don't know whether she says something like, I'll get these coffees, but you can get the next one, or whether she just bypassed the whole thing mm. and said, I'm running the meet. I can't remember how it ended. But that is what people are faced with every day. Every right? day. And so the grit of your cousin, the grit of Katie, the grit of all the girls around that table, it is every day. And if you're really lucky, I'm, I'm really, I have to say I'm quite blessed now. Where I am now, it's like, a bit, probably because it's retail. We're used, mm. to seeing, we're used to seeing a mix of gender here. There's literally no one, no one looks at anyone, like in any particular way. There's no treatment like that. But all the previous industries, 100%. So I am proud. I'm really proud of women that have that grit. I'm really proud of women that are making it every day of the year. And I really want those women to be called out. And maybe on International Women's Day, it's a day that somebody that would never normally listen might listen to something like this. And they might go, ah, that's probably me that would say, can we have coffee? Mine's white. And maybe a change of mind. So yeah. I feel proud. I feel absolutely proud to be a woman doing what I'm doing. But more so, I feel proud to be a person doing what I'm doing. But I appreciate the gravity that comes with the fact that some people need a role model. We were discussing, weren't we, what to call this podcast. <laughs> Though it was going to be in Slash of Women Day Ick, or whether it was going to be the, the women in Ick. Or whatever it was going to be, but I think oh, I don't know where I where I sort of naturally get to with this whole topic. And tell me, tell me wh- whether you feel like you've come to some sort of inner like, salient point. I haven't got my pen ready, by the way. I haven't written anything. Salient haven't. point. <laughs> pressure. Pressure. <laughs> well, I, th- I think that one hundred percent. I think I think that's probably where I am, which is the reason I'm leaning in today. And there's there's a couple. One. I think Colin is trying to do a good thing and he's trying to lean in possibly to an audience that wouldn't normally listen to anything Mm. around women in probably would not be open or aware of some of the challenges and just how difficult it really is maybe there is a young woman out there who is really tired and probably wants to give up a little bit because Mm. it is really hard and she needs to know that even 20 years on it is hard but it gets easier but we can unite and we are absolutely here, still crushing it, still finding our allies and we, we and still representing, basically trying to represent and change minds. Uh, and then the last reason I'm here, mate, is you, to be fair, because I think you're awesome. Ah, so thanks, man. That's it. You're welcome. We you're welcome. are class. <laughs> <laughs> we are. We're class. If you were going to summarise, like, I'm going to ask a question. Okay. Why are you here? Uh to be pod famous um, <laughs> I am here uh one because yeah Colin is is a gym and he asked us um but I am here because yes it gives me the ick but yes we should lean into it yep because I'm annoyed 
that we have to do it because mm-hmm. it's 2022. But at the same time, if we don't do it, it doesn't get done, I guess. So like so much has been achieved when you go back at all women's rights and women in the workplace and all that jazz, but um, not nearly enough. So I can give out about it yeah. and rage against that machine. Mm-hmm. Patriarchy, in case you didn't know that that's what I was talking about. And uh, or I can try and, you know, try and tone that down a bit and be part of the solution and like that. Be a little beacon and be like, hey, come on over. It's not going to be plain sailing, but um, we'll be right here with you. And, you know, I do work with some pretty smashy fellas as well who are really sound and really fucking yeah. they're good to work with. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> now. <laughs> now. 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 <laughs> been through the fight been through some trolls but now I'm like hey we're there yeah never leaving I think I I think that's exactly right and I think maybe that's a really nice point as well that is I work I've worked with some incredible incredible guys incredible right just like empathic um innovative progressive have never thought twice or even mentioned that I am a female peer or boss or whatever. Hmm. Yeah, we just need more people like that. And I, you know, maybe conversations like this can, can create more Lees. My, 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 um, my person would be Lee, or I work with a guy called David now, who's who's one of those sorts of people. And like you say, it, it's it's kind of men that are going to create the space and the room for this to be a normal conversation, as opposed to one day a week. It, look, it is. It is. It's this with any of the DNI stuff. You want to talk like not to get into it, like talk about race. Hey, it's a white people problem. We need to sort that shit out. Stop leaving it to the so it's the same with like yeah. the whole gender stuff. It's like, lads, you need to really start doing the fucking heavy lifting here. We are wrecked. Yeah. Oh God. Yes. We are really tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's like, I mean, maybe that's the call out. That's the call to action. That is the call We're to tired. action. We are really tired and we don't really want to be treated any differently. And we want international every one day every day so if you are in charge of a ship of any size you need to create space and not one day a year not a campaign not sort of stereotyping what a woman in looks like Mm -hmm. but just creating space 24 7 for somebody with talent regardless of gender male or female to come in and participate in whatever you're doing well, it's been wicked chatting to you, Elisa, on this amazing uh, issue. We should do this again. Colin, <laughs> feel free to invite us back. <laughs> like, yeah, um, listen to a first and see then. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And also, um, and to reiterate one of the things that Elisa said at the beginning, Colin is one of those people um, that does not see, that it is 24-7, right? It is, yes. everyone is just everyone, which is why we're here. So um, well done, Colin, for allowing us to lean in in our own way with our own icks. Um, we we didn't tell him we were doing it (laughs) (laughs) Um, but we really do appreciate the ability to represent Um, so yeah wicked thank you everyone for joining us Um, I hope you've enjoyed the listen I had a little laugh probably cringed or clenched your teeth a couple of times um, as we have and um, we look forward to spending some more time with you again when Colin lets us take over Um, (laughs) take care everyone